Hello, this is Marcus Matishak, CTO of Digitrax Entertainment. And today I'm just um, here to talk to you a little bit about a new function that we've added in the counterpoint calculator, which is uh, here the chord lock field. Um, so this is a new field, and um, I'm just going to be going through what it does very quickly. Um, so firstly, if it's off, as it is here, um, that will mean that the counterpoint calculator just works in exactly the same way it always has. So if um, you don't want to be using this, just keep it off and nothing will change. Um, so when you actually turn it on, what it does is it tells the counterpoint calculator that all of the notes that you're putting in should be processed in relation to a chord. Um, so actually this almost translates as the mode as well. So for example if I tell it that the notes that I'm putting in are should be treated in relation to chord 6 this um, will make it think that it's, we're working in the minor key and if I have it um, as 1 which we have um, here I have some uh, notes uh, in the major key then it will treat everything um, in relation to chord 1. Um, so when it's off um, then actually it treats all the notes in relation to whichever chord they're in in the chord sequence. So practically, I don't want to really go any further into the theory and um, make it confusing. Um, what I'd rather do is um, give two major use cases um, for using it without this and with. Um, so I think the probably the most common use for having this off is when you already have a song and you're already working on a, a track and you know what the chord sequence is and you've already written some notes in throughout the track for example perhaps you have a lot of other instruments and you're only using the counterpoint calculator on one or two of them or either way if you're just working on a song that you know what the chord sequence is and you've got it all ready um, and set up um, then that's when to use it um, off. Um, and the time to use it on is perhaps when you're coming up with an idea and you want to write everything out in one chord or at least in relation to one chord and then you want to swap between different modes and um, you can kind of play around a lot more with the notes um, through the counterpoint calculator. Um, so in the first use case for example here you'll see the concrete difference um, I have the Canon uh, chord sequence chosen and there's one bar per chord um, so here in bar one I have uh, I'm working in C major as you can see I, I don't have any accidentals chosen um, so here I have chord uh, C and then here in the second bar I have chord of G major um, which is five okay so with the chord lock off um, let's just say this is a song that I'm already working on. If we do go into the notes I've written, here we have the chord of C major in bar 1. And here in bar 2, I have a little theme which is clearly on the chord of G major. I have G, A, B, C, D. Um, so if we hear what that sounds like, this part will be able to come in. It's already part of the chord sequence and I've manually written in the notes for a G major chord here. So here's how it sounds. <laughs> So that obviously just fitted in seamlessly. So let's just imagine this is a song that I'm already working on, my own song, and I have lots of different parts. Um, this might be a bass line or something. Then, um, you know, for for the we don't want everything to be treated in in relation to one chord because we already have the chord sequence set up, and uh, we're just working on a song um, that goes in that way. Um, but now, if we turn the chord lock on, um, and let's tell it we're working now in a major key, and we want everything to be in relation to chord one. 
And what that means is that all of this, all of the notes here are going to be treated in relation to C major, the chord of C major. So obviously we're going to have a problem here um, because we have a D here, for example, which is obviously the longest sounding note, and um, that's going to be treated as a ninth um, of, of C major. Um, so let's just hear how it sounds. So it's not going to sound as um, correct as the last one. Um, harp theme's not sounding as good already. And that's because the counterpoint calculator is thinking that this is all, um, y you know, what we'd want to be relating to the chord of C major. But it isn't because we've already written, as as we went through, C major here and something to do with G major here. So to sort that out, um, all I need to do is put this into C major. Okay, so we just drag it down a fourth, a uh, fifth even. And um, there we go. So now if I press play. Okay, so now we have uh, similar results. Um, you know, the, the, the octaves might be slightly different, but um, we have basically the same pitches as when we had this in G major um, with the chord lock off. Um, so of course you might be thinking what's the point in even using this chord lock because um, you know we know the chord sequences and can just draw in the notes. Um, well there's a, another advantage. Firstly it, it allows you to just focus if you're working. If you're trying to create new ideas of course you can just write a whole load of notes on different tracks, all in C, the chord of C major or A minor or anything else, and then um, go through the different chord sequences and hear how it sounds. Um, there's another advantage of um, this, which is that if you tell the counterpoint calculator which mode um, or chord, let's say, that you're um, relating all the input notes to, then it allows you to change modes. Um, because it's already locked to uh, what it knows is a major chord sequence. So, for example, now we can translate it that into these uh, minor chord sequences down here. So, let's try one of those. change it to something that starts on um, uh, chord 4, for example. Um. writing a theme and then you'd like to hear how it sounds um, just in the minor or a different chord sequence, you can use this to very quickly test that out um, by firstly just writing some notes or the, the kind of um, sound of the theme that you'd want in terms of rhythm and um, the, the shape um, all on one chord and then you can have it translate to everything else. Um, so great, um, I hope um, that helps and uh, can lead to a lot more um, efficiency in your music making. Um, this is a function that has been on my mind for a long time um, from having used the counterpoint calculator just because I think if you're, if you're writing songs and you want to go very quickly through different chord sequences um, and just hear how your theme sounds translated to different modes um, then then this um, this function can do that for you. Thank you very much for listening, and thanks for using the counterpoint calculator. Bye bye.